Hi everyone! Welcome or welcome back to our Swiss adventure. Hope you're all well. If it looks like I'm slightly melting halfway through this video, that's because I am. It's currently about 30 degrees in Switzerland and it's really really hot in our flat. Today's video is going to be another one from the How To series for Switzerland and it's going to be about renting a flat in Switzerland or renting a house. All the advice I will give will be obviously just based purely on what we've experienced here and I will also link any useful sites or any articles or any search engines that I found that were quite good for this subject down below so make sure you check them out. Since this video is going to be quite detailed and quite long because I wanted to include everything that you need to know, I will split the video timeline into different subjects so you'll be able to see it hopefully on YouTube and it will be also linked in the video description so make sure you check that out if you're just interested about a particular section of this video. In today's video I'll be talking about all the aspects of renting an apartment in Switzerland so starting from searching for a flat to doing the viewings, to any useful information you need to know, to all the documents you'll need to submit, etc, etc. So hopefully we'll cover everything you need to know. And if you still have some questions, you can always post them down below and I'll make sure to help you to find an answer to those questions. If you want to know more about moving to Switzerland and our adventure here, make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. And also make sure you like this video if you like it. Let's begin! I'll start off by talking about searching for a rental apartment or a house in Switzerland. There are three main places where I think you could find uh, different options. One of them is websites where different letting agencies or private landlords post their advertisements so you can search through them. Another option is websites which are run by letting agencies. And the third option is Facebook groups which have been organised by people living locally and there you might be able to also find some flats and maybe flats that current tenants live in and they're just trying to find someone to take over their lease. Talking about the first group of websites that have advertisements from letting agencies as well as private landlords, there's quite a lot of different ones in Switzerland and the ones I could name from the top of my head are Immo Street, Immo Scout 24. There's also a website called Comparis which compiles all these other websites into a mega website and then you can just search everywhere. There's also a place called Anibis which is a website that not only has flat rentals and house rentals, they also have job advertisements, they also have a section for you to sell your stuff. So they cover quite a lot of different areas but I find that Anibis is not very easy to search on and it seems like the user interface is stuck in the 90s and they still can't really figure out how to make it modern so I wouldn't really recommend it and unfortunately the downside with Anibis is that if you want to contact any of the advertisers or if you want to just register on the website you would have to have a Swiss phone number because they will send you a confirmation code and at the time when we were looking for properties and we were looking at properties we didn't have our Swiss numbers yet, so it was kind of pointless because we couldn't use that website at all. So I wouldn't really recommend it. But the one I would recommend is called HomeGate. And the benefit of HomeGate is that they not only have a website, they also have an app for your phone. And I find the app very, very handy because there you can search specifically for what you're looking for in the area you're looking for. And you can set various parameters and you can save your searches as well and set up notifications which means that every time a new property will come up that match your search you will get a notification and I would say that that's the main one I would recommend of all the ones mentioned. The second option I mentioned was searching for flats and houses on the website of letting agencies. To be honest I'm not sure it's the best way to search for properties in Switzerland because you'd be limiting yourself just to the properties that are managed by this letting agency but it might be that actually what you want is you want to find a letting agency that will have really good reviews and they'll have always good contact with. Maybe that's what you want to do. And the third option I mentioned was Facebook groups. You can find lots of groups on Facebook where people will be posting flats that are available. Often there are flats that are currently living in and they're just trying to find someone to take over their lease. You can search for one in your city. And uh, I really like those groups because Often if you see something you like, you can contact directly the person who posted it, which will be the tenant, 
and you can arrange to have a viewing with the tenant, which means that you'll be able to ask all sorts of questions that you might not be able to ask a letting agency, for example, in terms of just living in this property, how it feels, how it is, and all these things. Whilst you're searching for your perfect house or perfect flat to rent in Switzerland, and you are trying to arrange your viewings, I think there are a few things that you'd need to know. And I will list them now in order of no preference. The first thing to note is that when you're trying to pick somewhere to rent in Switzerland, you should probably not pick any places that will cost you more than one third of your monthly income. And even though you think, I, you know, I can afford this, I can pay for this, this will be fine, the letting agency might just reject you straight away if you apply for a property that is over this third of your salary budget. You wouldn't want to, you know, waste your time looking at the flat, dreaming about moving there and then just get rejected because of that. So I would say just completely discard those properties, just search for something that's under one third of your monthly income. Another thing to note is that in Switzerland, the way they count rooms in the flats and houses is a bit interesting because sometimes you'll see something like two and a half rooms or three and a half rooms and you think, what is that half? What are these rooms? So from what I understand, in Switzerland, everything that is not a bathroom will count as a room but in some cantons, kitchen will not count as a room. So to give you an example, this flat that we have here, it has one big room that has living room and the kitchen sort of together. And we also have one bedroom and then a separate bathroom. This is called two rooms, but a flat that we have just over the corridor at the other end of the building is called two and a half rooms, although it has pretty much the same layout but I think because they have slightly more space for the kitchen, they count the kitchen as another half room. But even if you don't really understand these rooms and half rooms, every advertisement will have a description of exactly what's in the flat and obviously you'll be able to see from photos and you also understand that once you visit a place. Another thing to note is that often in Switzerland, some or all bills are included in the rental cost and normally it will state that in the advertisement, sometimes I don't break down exactly what's included. But for example, here I think the water is included, but the heating of the water is not. So this is something you might want to check if, for example, you're on a very strict budget and you don't want to go over it. Another interesting fact is that in Switzerland, if you're living in an apartment building, quite often they will have a basement area that would have been converted into storage for all the flats of this house. Each flat will have a little area that would be closed off that will be called a cave. At least in French it's called a cave, we just called it our cave. And it could vary in size, so we have quite a small cave. There's sometimes we've seen that there are massive calves which are the size of a big room. So you can always note if they have or don't have access to a calf for this flat in the apartment listing or also you can ask the letting agent about that. But having a calf is quite handy if you want to store various things you don't want to have in the flat for example or also if you want to store your bikes and your building doesn't provide a bike rack or bike shed or something like that. The next thing to know about is that Swiss people are very particular about noise and in some houses, they're very, very particular about noise. They will have certain rules that are set for the specific house about when you can be noisy, when you can't be noisy in general. You can't be noisy between 10 o'clock in the evening and 6 o'clock in the morning. But even sometimes if you're noising in the normal hours of the day, they will not be happy about it. That's why it's quite good to have a flat viewing with someone who is a tenant at the moment. I say that because everyone has a very, very different experience with their Swiss neighbors and some experiences are not so great. So make sure you think about that as well. That's why maybe renting a house is a better option if you can afford that. If we talk about Swiss apartments, often they don't have a washing machine or a dryer inside the flat. They would have a laundry room that is just in the basement of the building that everyone would have access to and most of the time you'd have to pay for every wash or every drying cycle and something you would probably want to find out before you move in is how does the system with the laundry room work for your particular house sometimes you can just do your washing whenever you want sometimes the hours when the washing is allowed are limited sometimes you'd have to book your slot or you have a specific day allocated to you 
but uh, you might be able to ask that letting agent or from the current tenant that lives in the flat. Another thing you might want to find out is parking. Quite often, if you'd be living in a city, the parking will not be free for the building. You'd have to pay extra, so it's worth finding out how much that is because sometimes that could be 50 francs a month and sometimes it could be 200 francs a month. So, you know, it can make quite a big difference. And sometimes the parking is not provided, but you can park on the street by the house. You'd need to obtain a specific permit from your local authorities to be authorized to park there all the time and not pay for it. And the last little thing you might want to think about is if you're viewing a property that is currently still occupied and you have your view with the current tenant, you might want to ask them if they want to leave any of the furniture that they have here behind or if they want to sell it onto you. The costs for removal companies in Switzerland are very high and sometimes people do not want to carry and move bulky items like wardrobes or sofas, so it might be best for both of you to just do a little deal where you buy off this sofa, you buy off this wardrobe from this person and it helps both of you and it makes it easier for you when you move and you want to find all the furniture for your flat. Which brings up another thing which I just remembered is that most flats and houses will be rented out without furniture but sometimes you can find flats that will have furniture but often they will be for short-term contracts and one of these websites I already mentioned before it's called UMS where you can find short-term rental and often they will just have all the furniture provided so if it's something that you want to look into you can always do that but I would say if you're planning to stay in Switzerland for more than a year it's probably better just to rent an empty flat and then source your own furniture. Once you've picked a few places that you like, you can arrange your viewings and just so you know, a viewing will be conducted either by a letting agent, a concierge that is responsible of the house or a current tenant and in my opinion the best viewing you'll have is with a current tenant and this will only happen if this person still lives in the property and they're trying to find someone to take over their lease. So let's assume that you have looked for your perfect place, you have viewed it and you have decided yes I like it, I want to apply for it and you think okay what do I do now? Well actually what you should do is you should apply as soon as possible especially if you are planning to live in cities like Geneva, Zurich or in Lausanne because in those places the property markets, especially the rental property market is very really competitive so you want to waste no time with your application and because of that it's actually worth doing some of the background work before you apply and before you view your flats because then you'll have all the paperwork ready and you'll just fill out the form and send it out and you'll be much much quicker and it will ensure that you have the best chances for getting this property that you want. From what we've experienced all the letting agencies ask for slightly different things in terms of the different forms and documents but they all have some things in common so I'll list those now. First thing they'll ask is a copy of your IDs then they will also ask for your copy of the permit and if you don't have a permit yet you'll be able to submit your letter of application for the permit and if you don't have that then in your application form you'll probably just write that your application is in progress or something like that but what's worth noting is that if you have a permit it'll be much easier for you to rent a property in Switzerland because they'll prefer you over someone who doesn't have a permit. The next thing you'll need to provide is proof of income which will be your job contract also, they'll ask for last three months of payslips and unfortunately, if you're moving here and if you're trying to find a first property here to rent, you will not be able to provide this because you won't have those three first payslips. In that case, you'll just have to say the agency that you've just arrived and you won't have those three payslips yet. But the thing you'll need to obtain is a guarantee letter from your employer that will say that yes they are actually employing you or are going to employ you and are going to pay you a certain salary. I'm sure if you ask them for this letter they'll understand exactly what they need to provide but that will help to reassure the letting agency that your job is legit and you'll be able to pay for this property. The next thing you'll need to provide is obviously the application form that will be provided to you by the agency and depending on the agency again that will have various amounts of information you have to fill in but normally it goes quite deep and personal you have to give all the information including your marital status, your pets, your 
kids, anything like that in that form. The next document you will be asked to provide is a note from a prosecution's office, I think that's what it's called, to say that you have no debts and no legal prosecutions. And an interesting thing about that is that once again, if you just move to Switzerland, you will not be able to obtain this document and you will just have to say to the letting agency again, sorry, we just moved, we can't get this document. And normally they say, okay, fine, we'll understand and you will not need to provide this document. But I've also heard that sometimes the letting agency say, okay, we'll provide the document from the previous place where you used to live. In that case, that might be a bit more complicated for you. And the last thing you'll probably be asked to provide for your application for rental property in Switzerland is a confirmation that you have purchased a liability insurance. In French it's called Assurance Arce and this insurance basically covers you against any accidental damage you may cause to a property or to anything that's around you. It's very strange but we had to purchase that for even making an application and I think for us it was something like 140 francs for a year so it wasn't too bad. In addition to all these documents that will be required, you might want to submit a cover letter or motivational letter for this property. I know this might sound strange, but uh, when we were moving here, we found some advice on the website of expats that you should provide a cover letter if you're applying for a flat because there you can explain that you know you just moved to Switzerland, you have all these documents, you might not have some of the other documents, but you're going to be a really good tenant, you're gonna be very nice, not loud, very clean, etc. etc. And sometimes that might give you a competitive advantage over the other people who are applying for a flat who are for example not providing this cover letter. When I told our friends here that we wrote a cover letter to apply for our flat rental here, they said that they never did anything like that and they still managed to get their flat. So that just means that maybe it was a bit of an overkill, but I would say it doesn't harm, especially if you are trying to find a property in a bigger city, like I mentioned before. Once you've made your application, you will be either accepted or rejected based on your application. And obviously the more Swiss you are, the better your job is, the higher your salary is and all those things, the more likely you'll be given this property. And the thing to note is that sometimes you might not even get a response from a letting agency. And it's always good to follow up either by email, but actually it's better to also follow them up by phone because it seems like here in Switzerland everyone likes phone calls but for some reason no one really responds to emails. Hopefully you get your offer for the rental and you'll be able to sign a contract. Something that's worth to note is that these times in Switzerland seem to start four times a year, so at the end of each quarter, so you will be able to rent a flat either starting from the end of March the end of June, the end of September, and then the end of December. But this might be different if you are taking over someone's lease that hasn't yet ended on this specific date. But it's something to be aware of because when you'll be looking for properties, you'll probably notice that lots of people will say that this apartment is available from, for example, 1st of July, or it'll be from 1st of October or 1st of January. And don't be surprised about that, that's just due to these weird dates that they have set up. After signing your contract, you'll be notified that you'll probably have to make some payments before moving into your flat or house. This will normally be a payment of the first month's rent. Then you might also get asked to pay some admin fees, we didn't really have those. But what we had to pay was, we had to pay for our names to be changed on the doorbell on the outside doorbell and also on the post box because in Switzerland when you have a flat or a house for example instead of having a flat number you will have your name and the surname written as an identifier for this property. You will also need to pay for your deposit and that is quite a big chunk of money. Unfortunately deposits for rentals in Switzerland are very very high. You'll need to put down three times your monthly rate. Yes, that is quite a lot. And there are two ways to do this. 
If you have enough money to pay for this yourself, you will have to open a separate account in a bank for this deposit. And it's worth noting that not every bank will have these deposit accounts. And also it might take them quite a long time to set it up. So don't leave this until last moment because we kind of did and then we had to basically pick a different bank from our current bank which meant that we had to pay an extra fee to set this up because we're new clients for this bank. If you don't have that much money to put in a deposit account, you can use something that's called Swiss Caution. It's basically a company that will provide a deposit for you, but for that you'll have to pay a small fee to them for the fact that you know they provided money to cover your deposit. I had a look at the website and it looks like for your first year of deposit, they will charge you 231 francs until the end of calendar year and after that they will charge you 5% plus some fees from your deposit every year. So the benefits of Swiss Caution are that you don't have to have a large lump sum of money to provide for your deposit, you'll just pay the fee and they'll sort out the rest. But the downside is that you will end up overall spending more on your deposit because you'll have to pay annual fee for them providing this service. Once you've paid all the fees and you have your contract signed, you can finally agree on the date for your move and you basically move in, you get your keys, you get the flat inspection list which notifies you of any damage that was there previously, you sign that and you can move in and hopefully have a really really happy time in your new rental property in Switzerland. Since I've just talked about so many different things that you have to do, to rent a house or a flat in Switzerland. I thought it would be handy to give a reference to the timeline that we had for finding this flat. I have written down all the dates and I'll put them in the little timeline here so you understand how quickly or slowly things move. We moved to Nushta on 8th of January into our Airbnb that we had for six weeks and in that time we were planning to find a flat and then move out of this Airbnb which worked out at the end. We viewed five properties in total and those viewings happened between 10th and 14th of January. So we started viewing flats quite soon after arriving. We made applications for three flats. One we never heard about and two we got responses for and one that we liked the most, this one, we applied on the 13th of January which was basically the day after we viewed it because we really really liked it and really wanted to make sure that we are the first to apply for it and have high chances of getting it. And surprisingly we heard back about this apartment the next day which we were really really happy about saying that yes we can rent it, we just need to confirm that we're happy with the rental conditions. After that we got our contract copies sent to us and those arrived on the 17th of January so we signed them and submitted them pretty much straight away and we moved in on 17th of February which was a month after signing the contract. In total it took about 5-6 weeks for us to view all the flats that we wanted to view, to apply for the ones we liked, to get a contract, have it signed and move into a flat. And I think that's really quick and in part I think it's because Neuchâtel is not too competitive in terms of the rental market and also we were really really quick. We started viewing and applying so pretty much as soon as we arrived here and that's something I would recommend you as well. And something to know though is that if you are planning to live in a bigger city you'll probably need more time to get everything sorted. That was quite a long video probably but hopefully that gives you all the information you need to find a perfect place for you to live in Switzerland. As I said before if you have any more questions you can always post them down below and make sure you check out my other videos about how to move to Switzerland, how to sort things out here, or our travel videos as well where I explore different cities, different areas in Switzerland. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it helpful. As I mentioned before, I'll link any useful sources down below. And if you're looking for a property to rent in Switzerland at the moment, I wish you good luck, I hope that it all works out well for you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!